Okay, so we are almost done talking about the small intestine. A couple last things that I want to say here. So in, in addition to those biomolecule types that I talked about that we are going to be breaking down and absorbing in the small intestine, we also absorb salt and water, okay? Um, this diagram shows how that is done, okay? So to orient you, this is the lumen of the small intestine. This is our epithelial cell wall of the small intestine. And then here's our extracellular fluid. So what we wanna do is move molecules from here, which is the digestive tract, over here into our bodies, okay? So uh, let's take a look at how some of this works. I'm not gonna go over this in great detail, but basically I just want you to know like what it says in the text here, okay? So basically sodium is going to enter the cell by a variety of pathways, okay? You can see them here. Um, and then, so that's gonna be on the apical side. And then on the basolateral side, it's going to be pumped out via the sodium potassium ATPase, okay? Chloride is going to kind of follow. Um, so what's gonna happen with chloride, you can see is that it is actively transported into the cell. We are going up against the concentration gradient. So we are harnessing the energy um, released from these other processes, such as the uh, movement of sodium or the outward movement of bicarbonate um, to get chloride into the cell. And then it's going to diffuse out through a channel um, to the basolateral side or through the basolateral membrane. Okay. Once we have absorbed those salts, that's going to set up an osmotic gradient that will then allow water to move across um, this membrane and allow us to reabsorb or to absorb water. Sorry about my incorrect use of the word reabsorb. Okay. Um, and then potassium is also going to move that way. Okay. I do want to mention that most of our water absorption takes place in the small intestine. We also have some water absorption happening in the large intestine. Okay, last thing that I want to say about the small intestine is that once we absorb molecules in the small intestine, they enter the hepatic portal system. They enter a portal system, okay? So I wanna start by reminding you that a portal system is going to be two capillary beds in a row, two capillary beds in series, right? So we go from the heart to a capillary bed to another capillary bed and then back to the heart, which is unusual. We only have three in the body, as you may remember. So I want you to take a look at this figure, which shows the hepatic portal system, and see if you can identify where the first capillary bed is in the diagram and where the second capillary bed is in the diagram. So go ahead and hit pause if you need to. Otherwise, I'll, I will just pause for a couple seconds here. Okay, so hopefully you figured out our first capillary bed is here in the digestive tract, mostly the small intestine, but also other parts of the digestive tract. Um, second capillary bed, which is partly grayed out, is right here in the liver, okay? So that is our hepatic portal system. And what is being indicated here is that all of these materials that we are absorbing in the digestive tract are going to go to the liver before they go back to the heart and out to the rest of the body. The point of doing this is so that the liver can have kind of have first dibs on processing uh, these molecules that we have absorbed in the digestive tract. Okay, so we have a bunch of important things going on in the liver. We have some detoxification happening there. We have um, like filtering. Uh, we have a bunch of metabolic processes. So we might take our carbohydrates and store them as starches. If we have an excess of carbohydrates in our bodies, we might take our individual triglycerides and store them as well. Um, or we might break down stored molecules, things like that. 
Um, that kind of stuff happens in the liver. 